Ted Haggard's fall from grace made national headlines as president of the National Association of Evangelicals. He had millions of followers. But in 2006, his career as a spiritual leader ended abruptly when, he was, when it was revealed that he had had a sexual relationship with a male prostitute. You find a person of the opposite sex and you make a lifelong commitment to them. Ted Haggard seemed to be a devoted husband. He was married with five children and pastor of Colorado's New Life Church, but he was living a double life. He had a relationship with me. We had gay sex. When Mike Jones, a self-confessed male prostitute, went public with claims that Haggard had paid for sex and drugs, Haggard initially denied it. Do you know Mike Jones? No, I do not know Mike Jones. Haggard eventually admitted that some of the claims made by Jones were true. He was banished from his church. In a goodbye letter read by another pastor, Haggard made this confession. I am guilty of sexual immorality. There is a part of my life that is so repulsive and dark that I've been warring against it all of my adult life. A new HBO documentary titled The Trials of Ted Haggard chronicles the former pastor's struggles after his fall from grace. And Ted and Gail Haggard are with us this morning. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. And still together. Oh, Absolutely. very much together. More together now than when the scandal broke? Better marriage now than before the scandal. Our children are all together with us. The family has come together beautifully. Right. Actually, that's what saved my life. Interesting. I want to get back to that in a second because you have been on, as this film shows, a real odyssey. I mean, you, it's, it's Old Testament almost, like in his being cast into the wilderness. Um, let's, I want to go back to the scandal itself. Your congregation finds out there are news reports about this uh, alleged gay uh, relationship, about drug use. As it turns out, your church also knew about an inappropriate relationship you had with a church member. Mm -hmm. Are you a gay man? No, um, actually it's complicated. And what I've, what I've determined is through all two years now of counseling is that I just don't fit in the boxes. Uh, people want you either to be heterosexual, bisexual, homosexual, whatever. And my counselor says I'm a heterosexual with complications, <laughs> whatever that means. Right. And, um, it, but now, through this counseling process that I've been through, I'm very secure in who I am and my relationship with my wife. Actually, my wife and I always had a wonderful relationship, which right. confused me. Mm. And, uh, and now it's better than ever, and I have no compulsive behaviors anymore. It's been great being mm. able to process through mm. these last two years. And you I wish think you'd done that 20 helps. years ago. I wish I'd done it 20 years ago, but I think the culture that I was in uh, right. Kept me from being able. Having to do grown that. up in a fundamentalist church and an evangelical background, there's mm -hmm. everything is very black and white. Very black and white, and and this process that I've been through, I just, I, I'm so grateful because I was able to process and work through things. And I think the documentary shows part of some of the things mm -hmm. that motivated such dramatic change in me. You've spent your life building this church. Mm -hmm. This church is really, literally, your community, mm -hmm. and your church says. You have you to have leave to this day. You have yeah. to go away. And in the best New Testament sense, isn't that the point at which the church should be embracing it? Well, th that Absolutely. was especially for Gail, because I deserved what I received. And so the way my view is, if people hate me, if people resent me, if people call me names, right. that's justice. I deserve that. If somebody's kind or gives me grace or is gentle, right. then that's a gift. But not true for Gail. Gail, Gail is not codependent, she's not weak, but out of her strength mm -hmm. and her devotion, she said, I'm going to stay with him. And because of it, she lost the vast majority of her friends and the fellowship of the church. This film shows you sort of going from house to uh -huh. house, mm -hmm. traveling around in Arizona in this U-Haul. Mm -hmm. You can't get a job. Mm -hmm. the, the, your kids, two of your kids are with you at least. Mm -hmm. In the lowest of the low times, how was it for you? Well, I was brokenhearted. I felt as though I had to walk through this with my husband, which I wanted to do. I loved him deeply. I love him more now and respect him more now. We're more intimate now because of, of the mm -hmm. truth and the honesty in our relationship. We're really grateful that we walked through this together. 
but I was broken hearted at the loss. And I don't think the loss was representative of, of all the people in the church mm -hmm. by any means. Right. I feel as though they didn't have the opportunity to reach out to us that I think they would have done. You still an evangelical? Oh, absolutely. Still fundamental understanding of the uh, uh, New and Old Testament? I believe the Bible is the Word of God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that, that gays are sinners? I believe that for me, for me, and my understanding of the Scripture, mm -hmm. that I need to live in a heterosexual, monogamous relationship. And before I tried, I never, I never blatantly walked away from my, those principles. Right. I just had a compulsion within that needed to be processed with a good counselor. And since so I've been, been able to do that, been I'm cured. No, because so I don't speak? think I was sick. Um, I, I don't think I was sick. I think I think all of us make decisions Isn't about that our part lives. Of, there's, there's a paradox then. Then it at is minimum. It is right. It is. So I'm a this mess. is the real you. I am a mess. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But but I'm I'm Here's so what glad I think to about. be I where think I am. On communion on communion Sunday, don't they th don't they sing <laughs> just as I am? Isn't that without a plea? Exactly. Good that's point. right. So, <laughs> if that's who you really are, why do you have to listen to man's laws as yeah. opposed to God's laws? Well, I think I am. You think God hates homosexuals? No, I do not. I don't. Actually, in this process, Jesus proved His faithfulness to me more than ever. You know, He said He came for the unrighteous, not for the righteous. Right. He said he would leave the 99 and go for the one that wandered away. That's you. All that's good for me. <laughs> and so, so, so I don't fit into right. the religious, righteous crowd anymore. He really came for me. I'm the chiefest of sinners. Most important lesson through this whole two plus year ordeal for you, Gail. Most important lesson for me, I think, is that love covers a multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. And that when I would choose to love in the midst of my heartache, I would heal. But when I judged or when I was scrutinizing toward Ted, I would just spiral down. And I think the teachings of Jesus are forgiveness mm -hmm. and love. And what he tells us not to do is judge. And so I think I learned the value of that. I mean, at the end of the day, love really does, does win out. And when we have each other at the end of the day, rather than separated, alone, and empty, mm. I think that's a lot to be thankful for. She says it better than you do. I'm sorry. Much better. <laughs> Much, well, Gail's the hero of this story. Mm. I, I've, I deserve what I got and what I'm getting. But Gail is the hero of the story. Because of it, our children are fine and they're growing. We're fine. Ted, thanks. Thanks. Gail, thank, thank you very, you. very much. To catch the next air dates of this HBO special, go to our website at cbsnews.com.